So now we go to our fourth and last video for the module on introduction on principles of tourism and we are now going to discuss the environmental impacts of tourism. So in the previous two videos, we discussed about economic impact and sociocultural impact. This time, we'll talk about environmental impact. So meron bang epekto ang turismo sa environment ng local at global communities? Ang sagot ay yes. Definitely, tourism has an impact on the environment of local and global societies. But before we talk about the actual environmental impacts, let's talk about how do we say that a certain activity, whether it's tourism or other types of industry, has an environmental impact on a certain community or the nation or the international scene. Of course, number one in the list is climate change. So how does a certain industry contribute to the change of uh, the general global climate? The next one is urban environmental quality. And this talks about the extent of the environment in urban centers, whether it's contributing to the overall pollutants in the air and in the water. Next, of course, is is the industry influencing biodiversity? So when we say biodiversity, this is, of course, the existence of different uh, living organisms, whether it is, these are plants or animals or other types of living creatures and the extent to which their ecology is maintained by the um, physical environment and the social environment that these plants and animals belong to. And of course, tourism, as we know it, can help improve or most of the time be, um, become a detriment to biodiversity and we'll talk about that in a while. Also, biodiversity talks about the um, extent to which the environment is affecting the lives and the existence of different living organisms. We also talk about the extinction of certain species that is under the uh, issue on biodiversity. Next, of course, is waste management. It's not just talking about, you know, do we recycle or it's not just about do we segregate the way we um, throw out our waste. But it is also about minimizing the amount of wastes that we put out for every transaction that we do in a given industry. Do we still make use of single-use plastics? Do we recycle materials in order to make more biodegradable materials, etc., etc.? So these are issues under waste management. But also in tourism, we also have other issues as you know, plastics and other non-recyclable materials and very harmful uh, materials. But we also talk about waste stages in terms of food like if you go to a buffet right you cannot um, you cannot eat the food that is you know um, wasted after the buffet has been finished and there are a lot of tons of food that is uh, left uneaten so this is also a big issue in terms of hospitality and tourism a uh, food wastage next is the maintenance of cultural landscapes uh, we deal with soil erosion, uh, we deal with uh, land management, you know, uh, flood management here as well. And also the restoration of and the preservation of other environmental resources like those found in the forest and in the water. So we talk about water quality and of course we've had an issue before about the water quality in Boracay being very bad because of the uh, bad waste management of some of the tour operators there and some of the accommodations there. And of course we also talk about issues in terms of forests when adventure tourists go from um, one forest or one mountain to another some of them leave trails of trash along their trails so uh, that's a big issue as well so in doing tourism planning and development for destination attractions accommodation in other sectors of the tourism industry it's very important to include eia or what we call the environmental impact assessment so EIA is defined as the process wherein we identify environmental impacts associated with tourism development at an early stage. 
So it means that when we look at environmental effects, we don't look at it after a certain infrastructure or attraction has already been built. But we see that during the planning stage already, we predict na okay, pag tinayo natin itong building na to dito, ano ang pwedeng biodiversity na wala? Uh, ano ang pwede na maging possible wastes na pwedeng mailabas nitong building na to sino ang mga taong madidisplace and how do we make sure that these people are properly compensated for the losses that they will be having no uh, are we going to excavate a lot of land in order for us to be able to build this attraction and these kinds of things no because we already have to make sure that when we try to predict the environmental effects of a certain infrastructure or tourist attraction in a certain given locality we already um tweak or modify our plans in terms of this infrastructure so that it minimizes the impact to the environment of that locality so now let's talk about the positive environmental impacts of tourism. So tourism also has a positive impact on uh, the environment. So the first one, uh, because of tourism, we get to preserve and restore ancient monuments, sites, and historic buildings. So for example, this picture that you see is actually an image of Stonehenge. No? This is found in the United Kingdom and I've been lucky enough to be able to see this in person. So this monument has been here for thousands of years and because uh, this has been declared as a tourism site, then a lot of government funding is uh, poured into this location in order to preserve it. No? And there are many rules in that area that tourists couldn't do in order to further uh, protect and preserve this area. So next, we have the creation of national parks and wildlife parks in order for us to be able to protect certain biodiversity and other living creatures. So for example, we have a Tarshir Park in Bohol. And of course, it's a tourist attraction, but at the same time, you know, it's a, it's a center wherein Tarshirs who are, you know, very endangered species can also be taken care of. But at the same time, tourists can be able to enjoy their presence while they're there. And of course, because of tourism, we also get to maintain other elements of the environment like for example beaches and of course recently we know the story of Boracay it has been closed down for some months in order for it to be maintained environmentally uh, because the increased tourist activity has already denuded the area and now it has of course not really now because there's COVID but you know uh, before COVID came no and Boracay has regained itself and it attraction uh, as a tourist destination when it became a cleaner environment. This also goes to other elements of uh, environment like reefs, forests, mountain, etc. So usually when we say that a certain area in the locality is a tourist spot, usually the LGU would collect some sort of environmental fee from the tourists and you know ideally the environmental fee will be collected and it will be used in order to maintain the environment of that certain tourist attraction of course that is not true for many um, tourist attractions in the Philippines we see that the environmental fee is not put into good use but the idea behind the environmental fee is to make sure that there is money and there are resources for us to be able to use in order to maintain the cleanliness to do um, environmental programs in the locality where the tourist attraction is found now let's go to the more dark part of it so let's look at the negative environmental impacts of tourism so first one we have hunting and fishing have obvious impacts on the wildlife and environment so there are those um tourists who really go to a certain nature tourist attraction to hunt and as we all know hunting and fishing if done incorrectly may have uh, a cause in terms of uh, biodiversity um, decrease. 
And then sand dunes can be damaged and eroded by overuse. So where do we find sand dunes in the Philippines? We have it in Pauay, in Ilocos. No issue yet in terms of erosion in sand dunes, but other places in the world have issues already in terms of uh, erosions of sand dunes. And then vegetation can be destroyed by those who walk. No? So it's very important to um to make sure that you know tourists follow that they are only supposed to walk in a certain trail now, there are issues about you know patches of gardens that are already uh non habitable by plants because you know uh some instagram tourists want to take a picture with the garden they lay down on the garden and then the place where they lay down that's already an inhabitable for plants. So, you know, it's also very important for tourists to become very responsible of the actions that they do while they are touring a certain tourist attraction. Next, those who do adventure tourism, no camping, mountaineering, adventure tourism, campfires may destroy forests. So we know the story of, you know, a cigarette butt, when you throw it in the ground, it may still be uh, a cause of fire, and then, you know, you have now a campfire and a huge forest fire that will take days, weeks, months in order to extinguish and of course the amount of carbon dioxide that it will release in the air when Hawaii the forest is burning as it's another issue and of course the amount of biodiversity that is lost after the fire is also an issue. So as an adventurer, a mountain or a nature tourist, you have to be very responsible of the actions and the wastes that you put out, you know, when you are doing your tourism activities. Next, we have ancient monuments disfigured and damaged by graffiti, eroded or literally taken away by tourists. Now, I've been to Thailand and I see some of the sacred monuments and the temples that they have. Some have had graffiti already. Not sure if it's from the locals or the tourists, but definitely the increased tourism activity has contributed to these um, actions already. And at the same time, you know, when we go to beaches, for example, we were told, do not bring home sand or do not bring home corals. Right? But still, you know, tourists are still taking uh, stones, sands, corals, and other um, natural resources, and they take it home to their place of origin, which is, again, not good. Next, construction of a tourism superstructure utilizes real estate and may distract from aesthetics. So, for example, if you look here in the picture, that's a picture of Baguio. And if you see a before picture of Baguio, you can actually see the mountain you know, where the Baguio is. And now you can't see mountains at all because of increased tourism activity, increased urbanization of the area. You know, it has been filled by many of the structures and of course it already blocked, you know, the mountainness of uh, Baguio. And of course, the improper disposal of litter can detract from the aesthetic quality of the environment and harm wildlife. I have a friend who's an environmental engineer and her work was looking into the waste management practices in Boracay. And she has found out that in the waste area, you know, in the dump site of uh, Boracay, uh, there are a lot of of you know wastage uh, materials that are found which are not usable anymore for example the the soap bottles and the shampoo bottles that you have in hotels those are just thrown away not recycled they add up to the pile and you know the garbage issue in in Boracay especially during the time before it was closed down for cleaning was very very bad and we all see the beauty of Boracay but you know the garbage issue the waste issue was very very bad back then so I guess the moral lesson here really is as I've said earlier is that when you are going to a certain area as a tourist you become very responsible of your actions you do not leave any trace of wastes or trash you make sure that you take care of the nature and the biodiversity of the places that you are going in 
So it's really about you know being very responsible, and because of these environmental impacts of tourism, the negative ones, uh, a sector of tourism or a type of tourism called eco tourism has uh, become very popular. And basically, eco tourism is not really just going to places that are uh, very naturey or forests or mountains or uh, clear waters, but it's really about you know when you are. Uh, going to these places as a tourist, you practice good environmental uh, habits. So there. So in this specific video, what we discussed are one the environmental indicators of uh, effects of industries on the environment. Number two, we, we talked about also environmental impact assessment. We talked about the positive impacts of tourism on environment, and we ultimately talk about the negative impacts of tourism on the environment. So this is the end of module number one, introduction to tourism principles.